Today, I wanted to bring you a short additional lecture on assistive devices. Now, don't forget, we go over all of these in your basic care and comfort lecture, but I know it's a challenging topic and one that gets tested on the NCLEX a whole lot. So today I'm going to pull it out for you and try to sum it all up in about 10 minutes or so. Let's get started. The three main assistive devices I want you to focus on understanding are the walker, cane, and crutches. For each of these, you should be able to educate the client on how to properly and safely use them. Let's start with the walker. When your client is using a walker, they should be standing right in the middle of it, not kind of off to one side, off kilter, right in the middle so they have good balance. The walker is going to go forward first by about six to eight inches, depending on the size of your client. It's really key to make sure they keep all four feet of the walker on the ground. We don't want any back and forth, picking it up and setting it down. We slide it forward, keeping all four feet on the ground. Next, we step forward with the affected side. Now, I'm going to use the terminology affected and unaffected because that's most likely what you're going to see on the NCLEX. But I know those words can be a little bit confusing, at least for me, I get a little bit mixed up here and there. So I'll also be adding in good side and bad side. And hopefully this is going to help clear up these concepts a little bit. The affected side is the bad side. That's the side that has been affected by something. Maybe a client has had a stroke with right-sided weakness. Their right side, that bad side, is the affected side. So with the walker, step forward with that affected side, bringing it up to meet that walker. They're keeping the weight on the walker and the unaffected leg. So when I say unaffected, I'm talking about the good leg. If they've had a stroke with right-sided weakness, their left side, their good side, is that unaffected leg. So we're gonna go walker, bad leg, good leg. Walker, bad leg, good leg. Let's look at what that looks like. Here's our client. They're standing up nice and tall in the center of their walker. It slides forward all four feet on the ground. Now, this client, it looks like their left side is their bad side, their affected side. So their affected side goes forward and then their unaffected side goes up to meet it. Rinse and repeat. Walker, bad leg, good leg. Over and over. Next, let's talk about how to properly use a cane. The cane is going to go on the unaffected side. Remember, that's the good side. It's going to go there so that when our bad leg goes forward, we have that cane on the other side to even it out and support everything. So that's the key piece of NCLEX knowledge I really want you to take away with cane is which side to hold it on. I see students get confused about that a lot. So cane on the unaffected side. Now their stance, we want them to be upright, holding that cane with a slight bend in their elbow. I don't want their arm all locked out with their elbow joint hyperextended. That's going to put a lot of pressure on their joints. We really want a slight bend through the elbow so they can properly use their upper body muscles to support that affected bad leg. All right. Now the sequence here is that the affected leg moves forward with the cane. So that affected leg, that bad leg, that's going to go forward at the same time that the cane goes forward. And this is why it's so important. The cane is on the unaffected side. I almost want you to think about it as like an extension of the arm. And as the client walks, they swing their arms. That's what we normally do when we walk, right? Kind of in opposition. Our right leg goes forward and our left arm kind of swings forward. That's just our natural gait. Our body staying even and helping us balance. So if my right leg is bad, as my right leg goes forward and my left arm swings forward, I'm going to have that cane in my left hand on that unaffected side to provide some balance and support there. It's going to help even everything out. The key difference here compared to the walker 
With the walker, we were going walker and then leg, leg. With the cane, we're going leg and cane together. And then that good leg moving up past the cane. So it's a more natural gait. They can move a little bit more quickly if they just need a little bit of extra support. So one more time, cane on the unaffected good side, bad leg and the cane go forward together, and then that good leg forward past the cane, a more normal walking stance. The last assistive device to make sure you master are crutches. First things first, you want to make sure they fit your client. We want two to three finger spaces between their armpit or their axilla and the crutch. If it's really wedged up against there and pressing on it, we can cause skin breakdown and even nerve damage. That's not so great. Now, we also want a slight bend through the elbows. This is going to allow them to really engage all of their arm muscles and use them to support themselves instead of leaning and putting all their weight on the crutches, which again can cause that nerve damage. After you make sure the crutches fit, you need to educate your client on how to use them. And to do that, you need to know your different crutch gates. It's important to know which ones can be used with clients who are partial weight bearing and clients who are non weight bearing. That will help you select the most appropriate crutch gait and therefore educate your client on how to use their crutches. So let's work our way through them. First, we have our two point gait. Very important for the two-point gait, your client must be able to partially bear weight on both extremities. So maybe they have a sprain or a strain, but the doctor has cleared them to put weight partially on that bad side. It's a pretty typical walking stance. Like we talked about with the cane, our arms naturally swing forward in opposition. So our right leg goes forward, our left arm goes forward. It kind of swings while we walk. That's essentially what's going to happen. As the right leg goes forward, the left crutch comes forward with it. Then as the left foot comes forward, the right crutch comes forward with it. So it's only two steps, walking with the opposite crutch and leg forward. Next, we have what's called the three-point gait. Here, we have three steps, and it's important to know that this can be non-weight bearing, and as the client progresses and gets better, can transition into weight bearing, partial weight bearing. So this one can be used for either. It also gives your clients more balance and stability. What happens is that first, the weight is balanced on the good or unaffected leg and the crutches. Then, both the crutches go forward, keeping the weight on that unaffected leg. Lastly, the client transfers that weight into the crutches and moves the bad or affected leg forward to meet those crutches. We call it three-point because there's always three points of contact with the ground two crutches, and a leg. Remember, it can be non-weight bearing with that foot that's bad all the way up. And as the client progresses, they can gradually set that foot down and start bearing a little bit of weight. In contrast to the three-point gait, if your client is totally non-weight bearing, they have good balance and they want to be able to move a little more quickly, we can recommend the swing through gait. It requires balance and coordination though. What happens here is that instead of setting that third leg down for a third point, the client just balances on their good unaffected leg and the crutches. The crutches go forward and they swing through and place that good unaffected leg in front of the crutches. Two crutches together, good leg moves past the crutches. Two crutches together, good leg moves past the crutches. As you can see, when the client is balancing on those crutches, they don't have any of their feet on the ground. So that's why this requires balance and coordination, but they can move more quickly than they can in the three-point gait. 
last but not least, we have something called the four point gate. As you can probably guess, this is where we have four points of contact on the ground. It's similar to the two point gate in that it follows our more natural walking stance, but we only move one extremity at a time. So instead of going right leg and left arm forward together, we are going to go right leg forward, left crutch forward, right, and then left leg forward, right crutch forward. Only one thing moving at a time. Still in opposition. So in our diagram here, we've got the right crutch going and then the left leg. And then we have the left crutch going and then the right leg. So it's like we take that normal walking gait where we walk in opposition and then slow it down to one extremity at a time. Now, this obviously does require partial weight bearing. At some point in the gait, every single limb extremity is on the floor and bearing some partial weight. So if your client's non-weight bearing, four-point gait is a no-go. But this gives them a lot of stability. It's slow, it's steady, and we have four points of contact with the ground. So if they can partially bear weight and they're having trouble with balance, this is an option for your client. Last but not least, we need to teach our client how to get up and down the stairs with their crutches. And luckily, we have a pretty easy trick to remember this. We are going to go up with the good and down with the bad. To go up the stairs with crutches, your client's going to have the crutch on their affected side, away from that stair railing. So we're going to have a hand on the railing, hand on the crutch on that affected side. They're going to move their unaffected leg or that good leg up the first step, up with the good. Then they'll bring that affected leg and the crutch to meet it. When they're ready to come down the stairs, they're going to go down with the bad. In this example, we will have the crutch on the unaffected side, the good side. The client will move their affected or bad leg down, down with the bad and then bring their good or unaffected leg down the stair to meet it. Up with the good, down with the bad. Thank you guys for taking a few minutes to review assistive devices with me. Don't forget to watch your entire basic care and comfort lecture for an in-depth review of everything the NCLEX covers in that topic. I'm Morgan from Archer Review, and we'll see you back here next time. If this lecture was helpful for you, we've got plenty more where that came from. Head over to archerreview.com and subscribe to one of our many affordable packages to study for nursing school, the NCLEX, and beyond. We'll see you there, future nurses.